Day 94, we're going to look at two other authorization based APIs today. And I'm going to ask you to mash those bad boys together to produce something really stellar. So we're going to start by signing up for the news API a API. So we're going to say get API key and sign up here. Agree to the terms and click submit. You'll immediately get an API key, which you're going to copy because we'll need that. Let's go and stick that in our REPL as a secret. And then have a look at the get starting guide. So there's actually examples for Python here and how it's going to work. And we're going to just get a bunch of current articles for your region today. So we're going to take this full URL here and we're going to pop that in our code. And we'll break it down in a moment. Our API key there. Let's make this an F string. So we've got that. And then use the secrets to bring in our API key. So now we can generate that URL with the API key. Notice how much simpler this is to use than Spotify's. And the main reason for that is that news headlines are plain text. They are easy to scrape off the internet if you wanted to. Whereas with Spotify, they're giving you access to loads and loads of song data that they have to pay for and license. So there's a big difference in how much security would be on both sides. But this is quite an easy one. We just send it the API key in full text. Don't forget, we'll import a few bits here. We need to import requests. JSON, just in case. I'm not going to bring in an authentication library just yet because we may not need it. I also want to bring in OS for that to work. Now, all we need to do is send a request to that URL, see what we get. Now, the country code is there and it's a country code. So we can always replace that if we want to. And turn that into an F string that deals with that. We're going to use result equals requests dot get. Send it the URL. Make sure that the data is result dot JSON. And let's print that and see what we get. So there we go. We've got a bunch of stories there and a bunch of information that we can pull from each one. Let's see if we can print out just the titles and see how we get from there. And there we go. We can bring in the titles of each one if we'd like. The very long titles, though. Let's see if we've got a URL to the original work as well. There we do. We do. We have a URL and we have a description. So let's print all of those things out and see how we go. So the only issue we've got is our content. If you look at it, it's not always great. This one here says to continue, please click the box below to let us know you're not a robot, which is great, isn't it? But it's not really what we want. So one thing we can do is we could plug this into a different service to do something else. Now, let's leave that there for a moment and let's go and have a look at a different service that we might want to combine later on. You take five minutes, go and get this site working. Make sure you can bring in new stories. We're going to go and take some information from OpenAI. OpenAI is a brilliant service that allows you to use AI in your personal projects. However, there is a limit to how much you can use and there is a free trial that we need to sign up for. So let's get signing up. Click on API, sign up, you create a password. And once you've verified your email, just refresh. You will need to put in your phone number and they'll send you a code so you can't spam them. And these are actually some of the highest levels of security we've had on an API yet. I'm going to say I'm exploring for personal use because I am. And then we're here. Let's go to the playground to show you exactly what OpenAI is and how it's going to work. It allows you to give a text prompt and get text back generated by an AI. So, for instance, write a 100 word summary. And if I click submit, the AI will do my bidding. <laughs> but maybe not the answer that I was looking for. With a personal account, you get free usage. And you can see here that I've got $18 worth of usage that lasts me until the 1st of March next year. That means that your usage is finite. So when you're playing with this API system, at some point it might break and stop working. And that's why they ask you to sign up with your mobile number so you can't make multiple accounts. For now, though, we'll be good. We need to generate a new API key, which we need to copy straight away. 
because it's really important we get that. We're then going to go and put that into our secrets. And you'll also need your organization ID, which we can get from settings. It's not always used, but sometimes it's used. So it's best to take it straight away. And we've got three secrets there. Move your secrets to your left hand side and bring them in so you've got them. The next thing we need to do is take some of their example programs. The nice thing about the OpenAI API is that if we check our authentication, there are examples for Python already. And better than that, the example for Python uses a library. And this is where Replit comes into its own because you don't need to install any packages to use the package OpenAI, which is a the library they've written. All we need to do is run it and Replit will build it for us. So, so I'm going to bring the organization down here and I'm going to bring the API key there. And if we run it, it should install the library and we should get no fuss. That means it's authenticated and it's working correctly. Let's see what we can do with it. Now we have two models we can use here. We can do completion, which is where we give it a prompt and get some text back. And there's also edit where we give it some text and ask it to do something to that text. I'm going to start with completion because we're pretty good with these. This example should talk to open API and say, this is a test. And if we print, and if we print the response, it's already in a JSON format because the library has sorted it out for us. So actually, OpenAI have gone to a lot of effort to make this nice and easy for us. You'll see there that the response comes back in choices and then in a second level called text. So let's see if we can manipulate that prompt to get it to do something else. I'm going to replace prompt equals prompt here so I can use that variable and run it again. And let's see what it says. Oh, there's no definitive most handsome ball man. Never mind. So what we can do with this now is we can feed text to OpenAI and pull it back. Let's see if we can pull back just a response. Now, once again, we need to go to index zero on this choice because there could be multiple things coming back if we ask for that. So we're just taking the first one and pulling the text from it. And that's not too bad. In fact, what I might do is dot strip it because we've got some random white space coming back. Try it again. There we go. Much better. So I've got a piece of text now. Take some time to go build yourself an OpenAI API connection where you can send it some text. Common problems here, well, they're very much the same as before. One of the most difficult things to get your head around is having to use the standard format for the news API and OpenAI's own library. OpenAI will give you things back in JSON format, whereas in the news API, we needed to format it ourselves. So actually, if you can find a library that works with your API of choice, they're always the better option because they do a lot of the work for you. Go and fix some of my code. There's not a lot wrong with it, but you will have to provide your own secrets. Okay, your challenge today, I want you to combine these two things together to make something really cool. I want you to pull in the information from the news API, and I want you to send a request to open API to summarize the news story. The easiest way to do this would probably be to create a prompt that says summarize, and then includes the URL to the news story. And then what I'd like you to do is produce a simple command line program that gives you five top news stories for the day whenever you click run. Once again, share it with us in the community by publishing it or use the hashtag replit 100 days of code so we can see what you've built on social media. Tomorrow is your big challenge and we're going to build an overly literal song generator using all these tools together.